Good evening and welcome to the March 9th, uh, 2009 regular monthly meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. I would ask the clerk to please read the roll call. Chairman Rowe. Here. Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Jordan. <coughs> Here. Councilor Lennon. Here. Councilor McKinney. Here. Councilor Sherman. Here. Councilor Swift. Here. Thank you, Deb. Please join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Town Council reports and correspondence. Do you have any reports tonight? I do if I can find it. Um, I'd just like to call the public's attention to a meeting that was held here in the Town Council Chamber on February 25th. This meeting included uh, five of the seven state legislators who represent Cape Elizabeth, South Portland, and Scarborough and Augusta. Uh, as well as the municipal managers and several of the councillors from our three towns, uh, along with Superintendent Alan Hawkins, and uh, I think there were five members of our own Cape Elizabeth School Board present. The uh, purpose of the meeting was simply to open avenues of communication uh, between the decision makers in our three towns uh, and to take a baby step in the process of relationship building. Uh, it's possible that, uh, I think, uh, through dialogue, we may be able to share insights uh, as we work through our problems and or even find some ways in which we can work together collaboratively to address problems. Uh, the meeting received good initial feedback uh, and the next steps will depend on how the various councils and boards in the towns um, assess their interest in proceeding. Uh, I would also add, uh, related to this but unrelated, uh, I was invited today to uh, attend a tour of the Southern Maine Agency on Aging's uh, Meals on Wheels program a week from Thursday, and I'll be attending with South Portland Mayor Tom Blake and Scarborough Town Manager Tom Hall. So I'm looking very much uh, forward to that. Other reports and correspondence from the Town Council? Yeah. Paul? Um, speaking of regional collaboration, the Greater Portland Council of Governments will be sponsoring our second annual forum series um, at USM on 27 March, all day, starts at 8.30 in the morning, and it is on building a sustainable local economy. It will be very interesting, and uh, we're gonna, we have um, some special guest speakers and a panel, and I think it will be quite informative. Thank you, Paul. Thanks. You've done some great work in that uh, regionalization concept in a number of different areas. I don't think people are aware of all the areas that you've been working in, but uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Jim. Other reports and correspondence? Seeing none, uh, we offer our first opportunity for citizen a discussion on items not on tonight's agenda. Discussion on items not on tonight's agenda. Seeing none, uh, I would ask the town manager to I'll give pass. his report. He'll pass. We will now conduct a review of the minutes of the meeting held on February 9th, 2009. Entertain a motion. David? I'll move the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the town council dated February 9, 2009. Moved. Second. And seconded by Paul. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? It'll be 6 0. Thank you. Item number 62 2009, uh, the Ordinance Committee is recommending amendments to the zoning ordinance and the zoning map relating to the BA zone. Uh, public hearing uh, could be scheduled for Mar uh, Monday, April 13th, 2009 at 7.30. Uh, I would entertain discussion and or a motion on this item. Dave? The question that I had is April 13th is uh, going to obviously be a pretty busy meeting for the next town council or for, the next, for our next meeting. And at the same time, these zoning amendments have been out there for a while, and I know there are a lot of people interested in, in 
getting us to a hearing and having a vote one way or the other. So although I'm in favor of the April 13th meeting, I just wanted to raise a concern that that will be a pretty packed agenda if, if that's indeed the night that we discuss the – will we have a hearing on the school budget that night as well and the municipal budget? Uh, it is public hearing on the budget that night. So I don't know if there's any way to accommodate what would likely be a fairly long meeting if we ever consider starting early or – I mean, I guess the other option is to put these off till the May public hearing, which I'm not in favor of, but I just wanted to throw it out there and see if there are ideas that we could well, Let me throw something out, uh, if I might. Uh, I would like to move that we table discussion on this item um, tonight until such a time as the question on 551 Shore Road is settled. Um, I, I think the town staff oh, – I'm sorry. I think the town staff feels like that issue has been settled. Well, I mean, I've spoken to Maureen or Mira uh, at length, both in our ordinance committee meetings and as recently as today on the phone, um, I, I don't think that changes the analysis. Uh, the, the planning board was charged with the task of determining the boundaries for the BA district period. Uh, so frankly, all lots within the town of Cape Elizabeth were open for discussion during the course of our ordinance com committee meetings. We have met Sarah and David, I don't know how many times, eight times uh, to discuss this and other issues relating to the BA district. I, 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 in my view, the issue is, has been resolved, and I don't see the need to table this any further. The only reason I would want to table it is if we thought we wouldn't be able to get to all the issues that we've got to deal with in April. Well, I, I disagree with you a little bit, Dave, I, I, and I appreciate the earnestness that the Planning Board and the Ordinance Committee has, has put into this. I personally think that there has been credible evidence brought forward uh, within the last couple of weeks um, that there may be some confusion due to an inaccuracy in a map. Um, and I, I would really like to see that, that particular issue um, brought to light. And I refer uh, to a letter that was given to us by uh, Jane Waning Nicholas the owner of 551 Shore Road, which showed a magnification of, of the detail of the map, which shows half the, the property being zoned residential and the other half commercial or, or <coughs> business zone. Um, to me, I think there's enough uh, question left there that, that I would like to see something decided before we send this not only to the public to consider, but uh, to consider it ourselves. Um, and I would, I would move that we table. I'll second the, your motion, Jim. Sarah? Are allowed to have a discussion after? No. Uh, it, it's, it's a motion to table. It's not debatable. But uh, we can have a motion. If, if this goes, is defeated, then we can have another motion. It takes four votes to It would take four motion. to carry the motion. So um, all in favor of my motion to table uh, until, and, and I would include in my motion direction to the planning board to uh, to give consideration to 551 Shore Road priority consideration so that we can move this along as, as fast as possible. But I really think it's, it's more important to be, to, to be right than expedient here. Um, all in favor of my motion to table. One, two, three. Opposed? Motion fails. Three to three. All right. Um, we have a few people in the audience. Uh, can I just weigh in? Who would like? Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, am I allowed? Do we need another motion or can I talk? Uh, well, uh, we usually when someone comes to the committee, the committee first makes the presentation. Sure, okay. Thanks. Very good, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <coughs> forgetting my introduction just to deal with this one issue, um, I agree with you, Jim, that it's an issue that should be resolved. and. But I, I believe that it's a very small piece of an extremely large um, package that we have before you. And I think it can be resolved in the context of a discussion about other things. In fact, I think it should be. And so I would strongly urge that we not table this and we put it on our April agenda because um, it's, it's not a deal breaker. In other words, it's we were charged with um, looking at this entire district, at not only design standards and setbacks and lot sizes and a way to make 
this whole, actually two districts, more to bring the ordinance up to speed with how the, 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 um, the, that part of town actually already is and looks, but also to ensure that any further um, changes would be more compatible with a very mixed, very dense um, business and residential zone. And that's the essence of what this is. It, it talks about design standards, it talks about setbacks, it talks about compatibility, it talks about uses that would be um, favorable to, the, in, in fact, enhance the residence that's there. And we were also charged with um, a second look at wetlands, which we'll talk about, and a review of the map. And essentially, we're given the charge to draw the map however we saw fit to make it compatible with the rest of the concept here. So we could have done anything we want. We could take it in or out or move it or, or, or bisect things. So, so the concern that Ms. Waning has, and I respect her concern and I want to address it, doesn't trump all the other things that are in here, if that makes sense. It, it's rolled into it. So I think it would be um, beneficial to have that conversation in the context of all the other. And it doesn't particularly change, I don't think, the Ordinance Committee's recommendation on 553. So I would hate to see it tabled and go all the way back to the start where it's been wending its way through this process for well over a year over this one very small technicality. And just as a postscript, the current map that we used to determine it has been in the town's records for over 20 years. And according to um, ta the town planner, whom I spoke with today, uh, it was adopted, officially adopted, and voted on by a previous council. So I don't think it should be a deal breaker. Thanks, Sarah. My motion to table was defeated, by the way. I know, I'm just okay. trying to encourage us to put it on the agenda, because I think all these issues will come out and they should all be discussed. Sure, thank you. Uh, we did have a couple members, or at least one member of the public, who would like to speak to this issue. Would you come to the uh, lectern, please, Ed? My name is Ed Matterson, uh, Charles Rhodes, Cape Elizabeth. And uh, there's a few things that have been going on. Uh, this has been going on so long, and uh, we're all tired of dealing with it. But uh, there have been some statements written, published, mentioned at meetings and so forth, which I feel should be uh, clarified. And the first one is that 553 is surrounded by businesses. And you can see by the photos that it's surrounded by residences. And these photos here, you each have a copy of it. Uh, so that's one thing I'd like to clarify. The other thing is one of the meetings uh, we heard from Maureen O'Meara that Cape citizens want businesses they can walk to. Uh, and she made the remark that uh, people will not walk further than about a half mile to a local business. She also at one of the ordinance meetings made the remark that Cape citizens will not tolerate any additional BA zones. So my question is, do they or do they not want local businesses? And if so, why are there not VA zones for all the other neighborhoods in the Cape? Broad Cove, Cranbrook, Stonegate, Cross Hill, Delano Park, Elizabeth Farms. Why are the neighbors to the Shore Road VA zone the only Cape residents to enjoy the benefits of nearby business? Is it fair to the rest of the Cape? So that's another point. A need for more business in the uh, business property in this uh, Shore Road BA zone. You see, these are statements which I say I'm trying to refute, or I think I'm pretty well doing it. The cookie jar has been vacant for three years, and it was offered for sale for much of that time. Hardly an example of a need for more business property there. Number four, a restaurant or eating establishment will not have an adverse effect on adjacent residents if the hours are limited. Some of these things came to my mind when I was at these ordinance meetings, which I was not allowed to speak, so I didn't have the opportunity to do it. I'm doing it now. The fact is that any business has to be supplied and trash removed, usually before or after business hours. A line of shrubs a few feet from a residence is no protection against trucks emptying dumpsters, either from the standpoint of noise or odors. Also, there's an increased potential for flies, rodents, and blowing trash paper. A line of fir trees is not going to stop that from Mr. Sanford's house, which is a few feet away. Speaking personally, when the cookie jar was in business, there was often objectionable noise after normal business hours. 
the cookie jar supplied other businesses than its walk-in customers. In summer, in summer, with the windows open, our house, uh, the noises were, uh, that we heard were associated with the trash removal and the loading of their delivery truck early in the morning. And uh, this, of course, was disruptive to sleep and enjoyment of your home. Uh, five, the Shore Road BA neighbor residents look at a gas station, so should not mind an additional business. That statement has been made by, I think, one of the council members of the the gas station was situated where it is when most of us moved here many years ago. It is a well-run and remarkably quiet operation at present, and Ray is a great mechanic and runs a tight ship. If it was a few blocks away, I wouldn't mind a bit, but I can live with it as it is. That does not mean I or my neighbors want any expansion of the business zone, or because we have accepted that, we should tolerate more business in what is essentially a residential area. Ed, could I ask you to wind up? Yes, I will. We Two try points. to three minute limit. On. The applicant for uh, 553 is a long term resident. This is his point. In the 38 years I've lived in the Cape, I do not recall ever seeing the applicant in my neighborhood. My understanding is that the applicant lives six miles away and never had any intention of becoming a resident here. And the last point the applicant has saved the 553 property from de deterioration. No one denies the excellent restoration of the property. However, it will immediately be desecrated when a sign goes up, sort of like grooming the sacrificial virgin before tossing her over a cliff. And there is no guarantee the property will not be sold and totally compromised. I sincerely hope you will consider all these points and uh, resolve this in the way that it should be. Thank you. Thanks, sir. I'm Emily Madison, and I live at 2 Charles Road. Uh, this is a map that Maureen, I think, gave all of you. And as you see, the property of 553 is shown extending into Shore Road and across it. So mistakes are made on maps. And I think that many mistakes have been made on the zoning map of five, uh, concerning the property of 551. Um, this property has really been drawn and quartered. It was on the 1976 zoning map, it's a east-west split with the south and south side of uh, 551 in the residential zone and the north side in the business zone. On the current map, it's a north-south split with the west side in the residential area and the, north and the east side in the business district. There's been no record of any change. Um, today I looked at the zoning map online and I can see why this could easily have happened and probably 551 is the only property in town that it could have happened to because on the west side of Shore Road when it becomes Cape Elizabeth there are three businesses immediately. There's the uh, Knitting Mantis which is mostly in South Portland really but part of the building is in the Cape and then there's the Cape Day Spa and then there's the Spectrum building. None of these really are what you would call neighborhood businesses, by the way. Then the next property is Jane's. A Cape Elizabeth has 697 acres, I believe. Jane's property is less than a quarter of an acre. So do you see how easy it would be to make a mistake on a zoning map when you're delineating even just when you're trying to divide the north, the business properties from the residential, if you're drawing a line, trying to include all of the business properties, you're really obliterating a great part of the lot of 551. The other business zone in uh, Cape is, um, as you all know where Rudy's is, and the lots down there, both residential and business, are much larger. These are very small lots in our area. And so this is a very easy mistake to have made, and I think it's been made. And there's no record at all of anything ever being changed through this process that we're going through right now for 553. Where is such a process like that for 551? It doesn't exist. And it seems Jane bought her property thinking it was residential. She lived in it for a good many years. This only came to light. I think I came to Maureen and asked her how this could be changed. You see on the assessor's record, which I gave you each, for the property of 551, it shows corrected from zoning map. All the assessor's records show it's still residential. 
In fact, it shows the use as residential. It's never been anything but a residential property. And it would seem very unfair to have Jane's property be rezoned, as you have the right to do business, to accommodate Lee Wilson, who bought her property intending it to be re to request that it be rezoned, and have Jane, who's lived in something, thinking it was business, it's always been, I mean, thinking it was residential, that's always been residential. It's never, ever had a business use. It's well over 100 years old, and it's a perfectly understandable mistake, and I think it should be rectified. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. Hello, I'm Jane Waning. I will be brief. Um, I agree with everything that uh, my, my friends and neighbors have said. I purchased 551 Shore Road in 1992, and at that time I was told that it was in residential zone, and in fact the zoning map indicated that. A short while ago, I was just amazed to hear that the zoning had been changed to business. When did they do this? I was never notified. No one ever called me. I don't know when that change took place. I would like to sit down with someone to go over the details of how that was changed, when and where it was changed, and why it was changed. And uh, I would like to have that request. I'd like to have that changed as soon as possible. Refer to refer to back to what it actually should be. And that would be in the residential zone. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify on, on the waning Nicholas lot. The map show, in particular, I see reporters writing notes down. It is currently zoned business according to the zoning map. Mrs. Waning Nicholas, Ms. Waning Nicholas has asked for it to be rezoned from business to residential. And she's filed a separate application to the town to accomplish that. We had looked at trying to accomplish what she wanted as part of this review process. She agreed against the advice of the staff to, to do a separate process that the, did come to the council and it was referred to the, to the planning board. I, and we, we sat down with her on, numer on a couple of different occasions, both the planner and myself, to go over the maps. And, you know, I, and, I, and I'm just concerned that there could be some confusion on, on some of the, the facts. Yet. I totally agree that there was probably a mistake made on the maps at some point. We, we, we've never disputed that. We, we clearly believe that it's an issue of the way that the maps have been transcribed over the years, but we take the position that the zoning is the most recent zoning adopted by the town council. You know, it would, it would be you know, easy to simply address Ms. Wayne Nicholas's concerns, but she has, she has chosen a different route. She has chosen for the planning board to begin a, in the town a new process. Uh, it came to the council a few meetings ago, and it, it's evolving in that process, and it could, could be resolved a lot quicker. We suggested the most quicker route, and instead it was, it was referred to the planning board, and unfortunately it's stuck at the planning board behind another, you know, shoreland zoning, farm, <coughs> farm protection measures, and, and a few other issues. But, you know, I, I do hope that the council addresses Ms. Waning Nicholas's concerns. But I just, I think, you know, we ought to be factual on the record and what the discussions have been and the decisions that, that have been made by all the different parties involved. The town staff is in complete agreement that the map is uncertain and that there's no record of a specific rezoning issue on Ms. Waning Nicholas's lot. But we do take the position the map is what the map is. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? I'd just like to reiterate and urge that we put, bring this to the full council. These issues are not necessarily interdependent. What happens to Ms. Wayne Nichols property isn't necessarily linked to what, what happens to 553, although I can see in people's mind they see a vague connection. They're separate issues that can be dealt with separately, and I think that it would be wise for the council to take them up and debate them. To send them back to committee, I think, will be counterproductive because all the committees that it could go back to have obsessed over these 
issues, meeting after meeting. We've had the discussion on all the issues. The planning board has had it. The <coughs> ordinance has. There's nothing more that at the committee level can happen. It ultimately has to be the council's decision. So I would urge us to, to take it up and discuss it. May, we may, you may decide not to take our recommendation about her property and to do the reverse, and that's okay. And that won't then change some of the other decisions. They're separate decisions. So I don't think that this one, what appears to be or is being presented as a confusion, should stop the process. We, we, as a council, can give a recommendation to the planning board on what we think we should do with Ms. Nichols' property, and we can also make a decision on the 99% of the rest of this ordinance that is not about that. That's my strong recommendation. Thank you. Dave? Jim, could I just make a motion then, notwithstanding my concerns about the jam-packed agenda for the April meeting, I would make a motion that we uh, schedule a public hearing for the BA zoning amendments that have been uh, referred to us by the Ordinance Committee and that that public hearing take place on April 13th, 2009. Second. Moved and seconded. Sir? I was waiting to speak. I had my okay. I'll give you three minutes. Um, <clears throat> thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Stephen Pop. I now since the last time I was in this chamber, I now reside at 14 Woodland Road. Um, everything there is on one floor. It makes life a little easier. This may be my last opportunity for a while to address this, this body. Um, I am very opposed to what's happening with 553. I think what's happening with 551 is, it's a nut and shell game, we know. We all, you all know it's sitting there. A lot of the families in the neighborhood are very disillusioned that they have no representation. That's not a ref reflection on me. That's a reflection on, on maybe the process. Um, when it comes to 553, um, you know, I am opposed to it. A lot of people looked at that property. They were told that it was, you know, a residential property, residential property. Ms. Wilson bought it as a commercial property. I mean, bought it as a residential property and now wants it converted into, you know, a commercial property. Nobody has backed if each one of you take your car down there and back it in the driveway, pull it in the driveway and back it out, and if each one of you can do that and vote for it without getting almost hit, then, then that's fine. That's not a bad thing. But do that, do that twice in the same day. Bring your car into the driveway and back it out because no one's discussed the traffic issues also, the impact. And that's something that would be on the, on, you know, the city's hands, nobody else's, if there's a problem there. Um, in terms of Ms. Wilson, I, I, I have no ill feelings towards her. I truly, truly think she's a nice person, you know, um, and, and I wish her, her the best. I really, really do. And if this was a dream of hers that she wanted to open a quilt shop or um, something there while she was there, you know, and she owned the property and she was there, I, you know, and there were some kind of concessions. I, I don't think that it would bother people so much if it were a dream, but to have something that's just tossed out there in the middle of a neighborhood and you know it's, you know it's, it's wrong, you know, that if it were next to you, you wouldn't want it. And you're hot to hot when you look in that mirror, you know it's wrong. But, you know, if it was a dream of hers, people, you know, people, you know, would look differently at things. And, you know, life is very, very short, and life is very fragile. Um, I'm not 50, and I've learned that. <laughs> I do wish her well. Um, if it were a dream, it would be different. But this is something that when she lets go of the property or, or leases it, who knows what will be there. And then, you know, if she were to sell it and somebody wanted to put a tattoo parlor or whatever, or an office park, chop it up into whatever, then that's in your hands at that point. Um, I, I, I have no ill feelings towards Ms. O'Meara. I know that Ms. O'Meara is trying to do her friend a favor. We all know that Ms. O'Meara has stepped really outside her duties, you know, as, as planning to, to, to really favor this and help this. People know that. It's a small town. People aren't stupid. Um, we know with the map. We know that you're the town manager. That could be straightened pretty quick. These are, we're neighbors. You know, um, like I said, this might be my last to be able to address you for a while. So I do wish you all well, but please look in the mirror, look in your heart, and um, maybe there is a compromise. I don't know, but I know that in its, in its current status and its current format, it, it's not right. 
Thank you for the time. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> Discussion on the motion. We had a motion and it's been seconded. David? Um, I'd like to uh, move um, to amend um, Councillor Sherman's motion. Um, I think his original comment, the concerns about the April 13 hearing date are correct. And this be a zone amendment um, is likely to draw a lot of people discussing a lot of issues. And to mix it in with the public hearing on the budget, I think would be a mistake. And I would therefore move to amend his motion to um, have the public hearing on the BA zone amendments at our regular meeting in June after the budget is completed. I think have a motion. I think does David have to accept yeah. a friendly amendment? If I, if I don't wish to accept it, then do I say I don't wish to accept? I, I'm, I'm certainly aware of the sentiment, but I, I think June is just pushing this off too late. How about May? What's in May? What, can we talk about whether May so, makes um, sense? The uh, vote on budget, correct? Is the public hearing, uh, public hearing in April? Uh, <coughs> no, the, uh, the budget adoption is April 30th. It's a special meeting or a separate meeting for that. When do we officially vote on the budget and hear from the public? The council votes on the budget April 30th. Then the citizen vote on the budget is scheduled for May 12th. So will we have already heard from the public <coughs> before the end of April? On the budget. Yes. Maybe okay. the May meeting. May 11th is the date of the council meeting. In, Could that? in, in light of that, um, I'd make my motion to amend to have a public <laughs> hearing at our regular meeting in May instead of June. I'm sorry. I was thinking that, um, that the uh, council vote on the budget was at our May meeting. So I'd suggest that the public hearing be in May. It's only two months. I, I mean, I raised the issue when we started this whole discussion, so I will, I'd, I'll accept that amendment. Okay. I mean, I, I know there are people waiting. There, the 553 Shore Road isn't the only issue here. There are a lot of other citizens waiting on, on this, but I, we're going to have so much, so much public comment in April. It, it would be tough to get through it all. Is the second okay with that? Second. Okay. Discussion on the amended motion. Seeing none, all in favor of the motion as amended. Show it to be 6-0. Thank you. Jim. Yeah, with, with all due respect to the last gentleman who, who spoke, it, it's awfully hard to sit up here and work with the town planner on a weekly basis and <clears throat> know the applicant who brought the 553 Shore Road issue to the town council and to hear you accuse them of being friends and for the town planner going outside of her authority, et cetera, that's, that's just simply not true. And uh, it, it's awfully hard as a, as a volunteer sitting on the ordinance committee and on the town council to hear those kinds of accusations that are completely unfounded. Uh, and I just, I'm, you know, I know we don't typically respond to the public's comment, but it's, it, I, I just felt like that needed a response. Council, actually, it's best if you do not respond to it, because I've served this nation 30 years as a volunteer in many different capacities, from the city of Boston to the White House. And simply what I said is that, yes, we do know that Mr. Walker and Mayor has, has been awful friendly. Now, if that's to help the dream, then that's one thing. I'm not accusing her of doing anything illegal, sir. Okay, okay, thank so, so please. Thank you. I think everybody's made their point. It would be best to keep your comments. Well, I'm, I'm not going to, sir. I want to call the meeting to order, please. Please be seated. Thank you. I think everybody has made their points. Thanks. Um, item number 63 2009, uh, fiscal year 2010 budget. Uh, I believe the manager has some comments here. Yeah, much easier topic. Uh, <laughs> The budget process this year is, is about as challenging as it's ever been. Uh, when I first really spoke to the council, it was back on December 8th about the budget. And I think it's important to note that since then, 
The Dow Jones has dropped about 29 percent since December. Uh, the governor's announced a further reduction in state revenue sharing amounts. Uh, the bank, some of the major banking institutions in the United States are in pretty tough shape. The housing market continues to deteriorate. The unemployment rates jumped from 6.8 to 8.1. Uh, the World Bank announced over the weekend that the global economy will shrink for the first time since World War II ended, uh, that uh, it's the, the worst economy since the Depression, and then Warren Buffett, God bless him, said today that the economy has fallen off a cliff. Uh, so we live in interesting times. Uh, the budget, uh, though, the, the good news is, is we set out a plan beginning in December in January, and the budget that you're receiving tonight is following that plan. It's, it's following the goals that were set out. Uh, fortunately, we, we, we've looked at structural issues. I think we've really looked at the issues we need to have looked at in dealing with the times that we're in and anticipating that the, that the times could be as tough as they are. Uh, as things now stand, the school board's been looking at the budget. The department heads on the municipal side did a, did a, did a terrific job, I believe, in, in looking at the various needs of the community. And with what the superintendent has most recently recommended to the school board and what the budget, municipal budget I'm recommending to you this evening, the budget as it now stands has an expenditure reduction of $15,600 from what it was a year ago. And it has a tax rate flat 1744 compared to compared to what it was a year ago this this does not come without some sacrifices some some uh, changes and particularly some structural issues the the most notable of which I think or on the municipal side of government has been discussed the most is the regionalization of dispatch uh, anyway I recommend the budget to you I think it's a responsible budget and I think it's it's particularly responsible when we look at the economic environment we had back in December and the way it continues to uh, deteriorate uh, nearly every day. So anyway, I would uh, encourage you to uh, acknowledge receipt of the budget, refer to the Finance Committee, uh, the manager's proposed budget, as well as the special funds budget, and also to re refer to the Finance Committee, the school board recommended budget upon your, upon the receipt of it, but, the, but this action will do the, the formal uh, referral at this point. I do want to make mention, and I want to underline, the numbers that I've given you this evening are based on the latest information that the superintendent has given to the school board. It does not entail final school board action on a recommended school department budget uh, to the council, but it does represent the, the manager's recommendation uh, on the municipal budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Sarah? Uh, is, do you know when the school board is going to vote? Is it tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, thank you. No, I think it's that tomorrow night. Split. Paul? I move that we refer uh, the proposed budget that the manager's uh, given us to the Finance Committee, including the, including the FY 2010 Municipal and Special Funds budget, and the school board's recommended budget. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Well, I would, I, we haven't acted on this budget, but I would commend <coughs> Michael and his department heads on the work that they've done. And if this budget or something very similar to it comes to pass, uh, we're looking at a 0% tax increase. That's very impressive. Thank you, Paul. Other comments? Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? 6-0. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And, and to the department heads for their, uh, their hard work on this, this budget. Uh, I've told many people I think the difference between this year and last year is that every, this year everybody gets it. <laughs> I mean, how bad the problems are. And I, I think uh, testimony to that is the fact that we were talking about zero to two percent rather than four to whatever it was. Uh, but uh, the money certainly isn't any easier to find and I really appreciate the work that's gone into doing that. Item 64-2009, uh, Thomas Memorial Library bylaws. We have in our packets uh, 
proposed amendment to the bylaws for the Thomas Memorial Library Board of Trustees. Dave? Were the only changes what was highlighted, because I printed this out, on the computer I could see the changes, but on my printout I can't. So it's just a few minor changes? Yes. Okay. If, I, if I might answer that question, go one bit further. Uh, I also did receive a late edit about 4.30 this afternoon from, uh, from the trustees, and that is in Section 4C, after promote cooperation between the library to add Thomas Memorial Library Foundation, comma, friends of TML and other interested parties. Is it already there? It isn't my copy, but it is not. No, it is. But I, oh, I printed it from the website, so yeah, uh, that was the. I'm not sure. I, it came in late this afternoon, and I thought it was already in there too. But the implication is that it wasn't, so I'm not sure. What what's the was reference on that again, please? Uh, page two, four, C to include Thomas More Library <laughs> Foundation. Okay. Yep. Apparently, already have it, so yep. I'm not sure. Yep. That one's in green. The others are in yellow, so I'm not sure what that all means. Thanks. We're still awaiting a motion. Mm -hmm. Dave? I move that we uh, vote to approve the bylaws of the trustees of the Thomas Memorial Library as recommended by the trustees on February 19th of 2009. Motion and? Second. Seconded by Sarah. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Six zero. Item 65-2009, uh, Riverside Cemetery Fees. It's uh, proposed to maintain the 2008 fees for Riverside Cemetery to continue through 2009 and then until further revised. Do I hear a motion? David? I move that um, we maintain the 2008 fees for Riverside Cemetery. Uh, to continue through 2009 and until revised. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Vote is 6-0. Item 66-2009, Recycling Center <laughs> Fees. Uh, it's pr proposed to adopt new fees for the Recycling Center effective May 1st, 2009. Bob, would you like to comment on that? Um, the town manager had suggested that I work with uh, a couple of commercial haulers in a sort of a collaborative process to come up with a revised fee schedule, which uh, hasn't been updated since, I think, May of 2003. And uh, again, you went into it uh, with a little bit of, uh, I'd say, I think I used the word trepidation. Uh, normally, when we come up with a fee schedule, it's always staff-driven, and uh, you know, we get comment uh, at public hearing or from the council. but. Uh, had a very good process, I think. We worked with uh, John Green and Nicholas Tamaro, uh, both folks that have local businesses in town, to come up with uh, a, a fee structure that I think that's workable for us from a town standpoint uh, to administer, and also to get a perspective on their part of how it actually works for their operations. And uh, we had a couple of good meetings and came up with uh, the document that you have before you tonight that, uh, <clears throat> that I think is workable for both them and for us. Uh, the manager has, uh, I believe, suggested in the budget that uh, we're going to net about ten thousand dollars. Fifteen. Fifteen, but with net, net ten, right? Net ten. Once uh, again, factoring in the slowdown in the economy, probably a reduction in materials that'll be coming in. But uh, I think it's a little bit uh, fairer for us. We had some things that, uh, again, since two thousand three, some uh, items have gone down for us to dispose of or recycle or reduce in volume. Uh, some have gone up. Uh, there were items that we didn't have fees for that we now have. So I think we've got a, a more comprehensive uh, schedule that uh, that will work well for us. So I'd entertain any questions that you might have. Or? I just wanted to acknowledge the presence if, you, if you'd like to look. Uh, my coworker Mary is here. Uh, we offered some comments on it and actually came up with a uh, <clears throat> correction today. There's actually a slight formatting error. Uh, under white goods, it says uh, items with three on. Refrigerators and freezers should be moved up to be under those two items because they do contain food items. So Mary picked up on that today, so thank you. If I might add to what Bob said, I think the other issue that came up with working with the, the commercial uh, 
lawn guys and gals, uh, guys in this case, uh, is that one of the major issues with closing on Thursdays is those that mow lawns every, every day, that, that's a real problem for them. And Bob, in discussions, was able to work out a plan that they would swing by the public works garage and there's actually a, a back little area that you can get to the, that area of the, the recycling center from the public works garage and that we would, for those, the, the folks that purchase this annual seasonal permit uh, for the taking of grass there, that, that, that they would have the ability to go in through there and just dump that material uh, six days a week and, you know, for the last more than 30 years since the transfer station opened, They've only, they've never had the right to do it on Tuesday. So instead of people being worried about, you know, those that are in the business of really furnishing the service to a lot of capable residents, instead of actually losing some, some flexibility in terms of how they address the lawn mowing needs of citizens, they'll, they'll actually have more flexibility in times in terms of how they schedule their days. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, that's another improvement in, in as a result of the collaborative process that, that Bob uh, worked with. Can I ask some questions? You sure can. Cool. Um, just a couple. Number one, the commercial hauler permit, non-resident. Mm -hmm. Is that comparable to other communities that take in uh, non-resident type uh, drop-offs? From what we, we sort of compared ourselves to Riverside Recycling. Okay. And other communities, I'm not sure if they do a, a commercial hauler permit or not, but their fees are much higher in, in the case of Riverside. So I'm not sure if it's comparable or not. Be honest with you. What was the intent? Was the intent to try to cover an expense? Uh, it's a revenue raising mechanism. Essentially, it's a way of tracking our commercial haulers. Uh, you know who's coming and who's going. But that was the initial intent of it. Okay. My next question has to do with the grinding. Mm -hmm. Is that expense intended to cover the cost of grinding? Grinding brush. Yep. No. It's, it's actually there's a cost to us right currently. There isn't a cost to grind up brush and wood waste clean wood, but that could change with the economy, it could change with the market for biomass or, or chips, but we have to maintain the staging area. Uh, there's an expense to bringing in a gravel or an aggregate material to maintain that. There's a cost to manage the pile, to move it, to pile it, to make room. So that's essentially what that covers. Covering that cost. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, who is it that determines if somebody, if there's an amount over capacity? That would be the attendants, and that would be their discretion. If you have someone that brings in a pickup truck, has extended sideboards on it, that you know they're carrying the amount of what would be sort of a one ton or a double axle trailer, they would have the discretion to apply that surcharge. Okay. Because it is, it is happening right now. Okay, thanks. All set, Penny? David? Bob, my only question um, had to do with the four places where a, an auto um, is not charged at all for um, bringing items in and a minivan or SUV is charged $5 mm -hmm. a load. And I mean, I can certainly envision lots of circumstances where you know, somebody's got a car and they open the trunk and pack a fair amount in the back and they can drive in and drop it off for free. And somebody has a little SUV and they bring in the same amount of stuff. It may not be an SUV packed to the gills, but they just have to bring in stuff in the back of their SUV or in their minivan and they're charged. It just didn't quite seem like a reasonable distinction. I think the, the intent was that you know, years ago we had a case where someone brought in, they had an SUV and they had to hold the back seat down and the back compartment filled with brush. That's the intent. And the attendants have the discretion. You know, if someone comes in in a minivan and brings in 25 bricks or 10 bricks, they have the discretion of, listen, it's $5 or it's, it's 10 bricks, don't worry about it. Um, but with the cars, I think we felt that if the residents wanted, you know, how much can they physically put in a car? And I think that was the intent. And that was the, the consensus of the commercial hall is that really, let's keep it affordable for the residents that bring things in in the car. Let's recognize that. Uh, but really what we're try trying to get at is someone that has a larger SUV packed full of material that, that we would charge the $5. So that was sort of the reasoning behind that. So somebody comes in in their minivan or their SUV and it's 
a really a car size. They've got a dozen bricks in the back. Probably wouldn't They're charge probably for Probably wouldn't be charged for it. Exactly. Okay. It's someone that's really got it freighted or loaded with, you know, brush or wood waste or something like that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Other questions or comments? Questions of Bob while he's at the lectern? Thank you very much, Bob. You're very welcome. <clears throat> Other discussion among the councillors? I'd entertain a motion on the, uh, on the item. Paul? I move, move that we pro the council adopt new fees that are proposed for the recycling center effective May 1, 2009. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion. 6-0, thank you. Um, before we go to item 67-2009, I'd like to just uh, summarize upcoming meetings that the town council has. Uh, the finance committee will be kicking into gear uh, on March 19th, 23rd, 26th, and 30th, and potentially on April 1st. Uh, this, of course, is consideration of the budget. Uh, let's see. On April 13th, uh, 2009, we will hold a public hearing on the annual budget. Uh, April 30th will be a special meeting to adopt the annual budget. On May th uh, 11th is our regular town council meeting for May, and uh, first and hopefully last of the citizen vote uh, citizen school budget validation votes will occur on May 12, 2009. And now we'll go back to item 67-2009. We'll be entering executive Citizens session. Citizens discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Dis Citizens discussion. Lee, did you have anything? Or Mr. Pop? Did you have anything? Items on, not on the agenda? Okay. Uh, Item 67-2009, uh, we have actually four different items to consider in an executive session tonight. Uh, what I'd propose is that we deal with two of them and come out and, and re-enter public session uh, as we have to to vote. Uh, the other two, I think, can be held uh, in executive session without reappearing in the public. So uh, I would entertain a motion to that effect. Uh, the two items that uh, we need to vote on would be uh, the pr proposed acquisition of an easement and also the abatement of a tax uh, situation. The other two items uh, to discuss uh, collective bargaining agreements and the further evaluation of the town manager we can handle uh, without reappearing in public. When you agree in fair and public can be on TV or no? Uh, what's, the, what's the feeling of the council? No. We will allow our videographer to, to go home. Anyone that wants to know what happened Anyone can to call know, tomorrow. Can call. <laughs> so I would entertain a motion to that effect. David? I move the council enter executive session in accordance with 1 MRSA section 4056, um, subparagraphs A, C, D, and F to continue the annual evaluation of the town manager to review the status of collecting bargaining agreements, to discuss the potential acquisition of an easement for the Greenbelt, and to review a request for a property tax hardship abatement. And that the uh, council leave executive session um, and reconvene in public hearing uh, for the purpose of voting on the potential acquisition of an easement for the Greenbelt and for voting on the request for a property tax Hardship abate. Thank you, David. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Show us to be adjourning to executive session at 825, please. <clears throat>